Good morning, Fairview and friends, and welcome to worship in the in and from the sanctuary of Fairview Community Church, Costa Mesa, California. We're delighted to include those attending virtually from far and near. Fairview is a diverse community, a joyously open and affirming congregation affiliated with the American Baptist Churches in the U.S. and the United Church of Christ. Today in an act towards reconciliation, we acknowledge that for thousands of years, indigenous people have walked this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge the Tongva people and their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Today we also acknowledge that this is a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of race, creed, age, color, background, or sexual orientation. Whoever you are and wherever you are, know that there is a place for you here at Fairview. Just a quick reminder that we're in the middle of a very important election in California, so if you haven't voted, please get out there and vote. Let's do it this week, I think. I mentioned last week, today we're, we're beginning a month-long celebration of creation. Today is Earth Sunday. Then we'll have Humanity Sunday, Sky Sunday, and Mountain Sunday. Gary Barber will be preaching the next two Sundays as I will be on vacation, heading off to Boise to see my family and then to the Bay Area for a couple of meetings and just to check in since I haven't been there and since I left in January. Time off. Today's Earth Sunday is entitled, oh, I know I did want to say, uh, I'll be back for the last Sunday of the month, which is Mountain Sunday, and we also do the Blessing of the Animals on uh, 26th of September, so you go ahead of time. You can get your pets groomed and then ready to come, and we'll figure out how to do a little blessing in their critters. And I, I will say that I've never worn this stone before, but I realize it has turtles and elephants and zebras and trees, and it seems appropriate for Earth Sunday, so there you go. Today's Earth Sermon, uh, Sunday sermon is entitled, God's Good Earth. Well, there are many creation-related texts. There are many uh, creation texts related to the Earth. We'll use a contemporary paraphrase of the first 25 verses of the first chapter of Genesis for our scripture reading today. If we truly believe that this is God's good earth, how should we relate to it and all its wonderful resources? Are we grateful in our attitude and responsible in our behavior, or do we tend to just take it all for granted? In our words of preparation, the wonderful writer Brian McLaren meditates on creation. He says, if you ask what language the creator speaks, the best answer is this. God's first language is full spectrum light, clear water, deep sky, red squirrel, blue whale, gray parrot, green lizard, golden aspen, orange mango, yellow, warbler, laughing child, rolling river, serene forest, churning storm, spinning planet. The universe is God's work of art, God's handiwork. All created things speak or sing of the God who made them. Join me in this litany for lighting of the community candle. Fountain of life, pulse of life, breath of life. Earth is filled with the presence of God. A living green blue planet, peoples from every corner of creation, the vast reaches of space above us, and the rocks and the hills and the wonders of the wild. Together this day, let us sense the face of God in all of creation. 
stand in your scissor mood and sing the first two stanzas of Morning is Broken. silently through space. We celebrate your beauty and your grace, your special place in our solar system. Planet Earth, gleaming green and blue, we rejoice in your ocean currents as they dance and swirl below. Planet Earth, pulsing with light, we join in praise with all your fauna and flora as they sing their song. Planet Earth, enveloped in the breath of God, bless all your creatures this day with your life and be aware of Planet Earth, our precious, fragile home, we celebrate with all your children God's presence in our planet home. Spin, Planet Earth, spin. Sing, Planet Earth, sing. But sing. Beauty. watching online to share your joys and concerns either through the chat on Facebook or YouTube and or through our email. What are your joys and concerns today?
we have joys and concerns that people want to share? Last week we had a lot. Amy? Dry weather. Are you, are you for it or against it? <laughs> for dry weather, okay. We just came from family breakfast, wide family, to celebrate our great-grandson's fourth birthday. Yeah. New life, yeah. going strong. Yeah. His name is Knox. Like John Knox, yes, sorry, not Fort Knox, okay. Um, just to bless my father who's struggling with Parkinson's. all of God's creatures that are suffering maybe sometimes even more than we are from the terrible weather and the storms and the lack of water and food. Other joys or concerns that people have? Just uh, continued um, prayers for our firefighters out there trying to keep everyone, everyone uh, safe and also for our healthcare workers out there trying to do the same thing. Prayers for my family on the seventh anniversary of losing my, grand my grandma and my uncle. And prayers for our cousin Patty, who's in the hospital with appendicitis. And welcome home to Elena, and we'll keep her and her dad and her family in prayer as well as they continue to grieve the loss of her mom. <laughs> is still a little awkward, but anyway. Um, I have some extra prayer, other prayer concerns, not extra, but others. Uh, my sister Charlotte has asked prayers for her friend Becky West, who is living with blood cancer. A friend and uh, seminary classmate with whom I've reconnected, who lives in uh, Crested Butte, Colorado, up in the mountains, uh, reports that through a series of miracles, an Afghan friend of his is in line to escape the madness, he says if the plane was allowed to take off. Of course, just getting to the plane is dicey, so he said he can't say more at this time until uh, it's resolved, but to please keep uh, his friend and the fa his family as safe as possible. Harley and Ruji Jimarino are celebrating their 15, 15th uh, wedding anniversary in Cancun. Erica, uh, asked, Erica, Rocca, Erica Harris Rocca asked that we keep her mother-in-law in prayer. She fell and broke her hip and was doing well and then fell again and they had to re-hospitalize her and I'm not sure if uh, we have an update on that. Um, Lynn Kelly reminds us that her, our sister church, Grace Baptist of Chicago, uh, welcomed their new interim pastor, Heather Fitch, this week. Uh, we pray for the, all of those in Afghanistan and the crisis there as people are still trying to escape and settle and uh, find a new way of life. For all those along the Gulf Coast and in the Northeast affected by Hurricane Ida, remember Mike's friend Jason and I have a friend in New Orleans, uh, Kenny. Um, for Kathleen uh, Gregory's dear friend Heather, whose 13-year-old son was killed recently in a car crash. For the Armstrongs, Dan, Judy, and Scott is they are in a slow recovery from COVID. Uh, Walter Carnwright reminded us last week that his friend Kleana uh, had good news on her biopsies, but still looking at uh, uh, tests for considering what her treatment would be for lumps in her breast. And Gary reminded us that Alonzo Padrine's uh, stepbrother Frank died, and uh, Alonzo texted me that he was. Uh, he, he misses he miss his brother's laughter, especially. Uh, so hold Alonzo and his family. Friends, did you celebrate your 80th, 88th yet? Did you have a party? All week. All week well, yeah, all month long. We can turn 80. 80. You have a bouquet, she has a bouquet of flowers in every room in her house. Well, at, that's as it should be. 
Uh, Fran had her 88th birthday this week, and we celebrated also her 53rd year of membership in Fairview. Um, remember those affected by the wildfires in the western U.S. and um, all those affected by the COVID pandemic and the grace to get vaccinated and the wisdom to continue to exercise caution in all our interactions, including wearing masks. And that's a, we ask you to do that in the sanctuary. When we go outside for our fresh foods, you can take your mask off. Keep physical distance to protect yourself and others. For the health and safety of our communities, as I, we gather, continue to remember children, teachers, and school staff as they as school reopens and does it back and forth. It's different, different places. Our congregation and our discernment work and the work of our pastoral search committee and for a better understanding of differences and peace and well-being on this earth as well as for the earth itself. Since this is Earth Day, I uh, like this prayer of the wonderful writer Marin Tarabasi. It's a psalm for Earth Day, and I invite you to join me as we do this responsibly. Praise God for bees and monarchs, so fragile, so holy. Praise God, deep oil and coal, the grandmother of diamonds. Praise God, acidophilus, good bacteria scrubbing intestines. Praise God, asteroids, brown dwarfs, pulsars and quasars, flyby Pluto, supernova remnants and meteor showers. Praise God, fleas, flies, alder bark, beetle, grasshopper, tiger mosquito, sycamore, lace bug, damselfly, velveteen, caterpillar, night sparkling lampyridae, also known as lightning bug. Praise God, sage and sweetgrass, prickly pear, cactus, and horse mint. Praise God, adder and python, grass snake and blonde hog nose, crate, cobra, and sidewinder. Praise God, quick rabbit, smelly skunk, inky squid, bristling porcupine. Praise God, terriers and tabbies, pansies and orchids, garlic and Brussels sprouts. Also angels seen in the unrolling of the lily of the valley, coral fern and frog's tongue. Let the whole creation cry, praise God. Let's keep a moment of silence as we consider the holy in our own joys and concerns. The people of God have a human face. We laugh, we weep, we wait and hope. We lift our eyes and stub our toes. We love and struggle, we fail, we stand, and we and always we stand on trembling ground. But God is God, and Jesus is our companion, and the Spirit will lift up our feet. God is the center. God is at our endings. Nothing lies beyond the love of the creating one. Amen. This is the time in which we return to God a portion of that which we, with which we've been blessed. There are two opportunities this morning to give. and um, One is for the ongoing work of Fairview Community Church for the building up of God's beloved community, our regular church offering. And starting this month, each uh, communion Sunday, the first Sunday of the month, we'll be taking a special fellowship offering for SOS, which stands for 
Share ourselves, uh, spare ourselves. Oh, that may be too. But share ourselves, which is a local uh, group in need, and um, and what and the one great hour of sharing. Uh, it appears through your generosity. Last month we raised uh, over six hundred dollars for one great hour of sharing, plus the five thousand that we're giving from the fellowship fund. So that's a very generous offering as we remembered both the victims and the, the those affected by the fires and those affected by the storms. Uh, that money goes, 100% of what you donate goes to uh, meet the needs of those, uh, those people for both uh, disaster and re uh, refugee relief. You give to support, the, you may give to support the work of Fairview Community Church or the communion and the communion offering, not or, and the communion offering through your bank's automatic bill pay service with credit card or bank account by phone. You can write a check and mail it to the church or you can place it in one of the two little boxes in the back on the table where the order of worship is. Um, all this information is on our giving page at OC Fairview church.org backslash donate. In this moment, in this act, we pledge ourselves anew to a responsible stewardship of our financial resources, our time, and our talent, and of this good earth we inhabit by God's grace. Life springs forth from God's creative impulse. Life filled with enough for all, with justice and fairness, with hope and peace and overflowing love. Will we do our part to sustain God's creation? Will we do what we can to make God's will a little more real in our world? We, got, we present now our tithes and offerings. Pray with me. Spirit of God, among the streets of business and in the places of healing and learning, renew the face of the earth. Among the budding orchards and in the, gre and in the grassless paddocks, renew the face of the earth. Among the tired and broken families, renew the face of the earth. Among these people and with these our gifts, renew the face of the earth. Amen. Praise God, all creatures. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God for all that love has done. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, one. Amen. In lieu of an ancient word, this contemporary paraphrase by Timothy Wayne Good of Genesis 1, which he entitled Beginningness. Before the beginning of time was the eternal God, our beginning was God's creation of space and a nascent mass we would someday call home. The earth was an assemblage of primordial solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas still without form, still unlit. God's spirit moved across its face as God said, here is light, so be it. The lights embracing and warming of the cold, dark world pleased God. God spun the planet to separate the hours into days and nights. The first day came to close. The next day, God separated the waters above and below. So be it. God called the moisture sky and the sunset and dawn of the second day in this primeval atmosphere created a global rainbow. On the third day, God next separated the solid particles from water below to create land and sea. So be it, God said, and it was pleasing. But land needs roots to bind it together and make it alive. So God caused plants of all kinds to spring forth from the once sterile ground. Fertile soil was created. So be it. 
God was pleased as another evening and morning brought an end to the third day. On the fourth day, God separated the nebulous glow of light by allowing celestial bodies to shine through the clearing atmosphere. It was as it was willed. The cosmos danced across the heavens and the sun and the moon raced and God was pleased. The next day, God made the waters below and above alive with new life. Leviathans, bugs, whales, bats, birds, and fish. And they all pleased God, and God blessed them with the fruitfulness of ongoing creation. Evening passed, and then the dawn, fifth day, was done. God continued populating the planet by introducing land animals into the green paradise, and it pleased God. God said, this next creature I will make in my own image with my own essence so that it may be able to rule over my earthly kingdom with wisdom and compassion. So God formed humanity in all its many visages in God's image. In the image of God made them all from the dirt of the earth God made them. God made them like God's self, male and female. God blessed them, too, with fruitfulness and gave them responsibility for the care of creation. See, God said, I have given you everything you need to thrive and abundance to sustain you and give you joy. God looked at the intricate relatedness of each of the worlds God created we too see the intricate intimacies of life on earth, the chains, webs, and circles of mutualism and dependence. God was pleased with God's work. It was bustling, teeming, complete, and whole, perfect. So God finished and took the final day off. God blessed this seventh day and made it holy to enjoy creation and to remember the Creator. These are the generations of God's creation of all. So be it. Earth is full of wit and wisdom. Stand and sing as you're moved. Earth is full of wit and wisdom, sounding God's delighted laugh. From the tiny roly-poly to the treetop tall giraffe, all creation sings in wonder, even rocks and trees rejoice. As they join the ringing chorus, echoes of our Maker's voice. Earth is full of wit and wisdom, woven into harmony. Every creature has a purpose, every flower and bumblebee. Spider, human, redwood, gecko, monkey, chick, and mouse, and snake live within a single fabric cloth that only God could make. Earth is full of wit and wisdom, penguin, platypus, and scale. Cactus, sea slug, oak, and algae, from the microbe to the whale. In this great and strange creation, with a breath God gives us birth. Born of soil to live as stewards, called to love and serve the earth. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. There's a profound sense in which this great poem by Gerard Manley Hopkins captures a dilemma we face as we enter into this creation month. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. The earth is God's and all that is in it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when it was done, God saw everything that she had made. And indeed, it was very good. This is God's good earth. And yet as Hopkins continues, generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and it wears man's humanity's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. Do we really see and understand this as God's good earth? Or have we taken the position that, while God may have created, creation itself was left for us. It's our gift to use and abuse as we see fit. What footprints have we left on God's good earth as we trod across it? Our heavy human boots searing and blearing, smearing and smudging. How do we reconcile the goodness of creation with some of the careless and callous decisions we humans have made in the exercise of our dominion? Friends, my friend, my intent here is not to condemn progress. There's a place for human ingenuity. We've celebrated it already, sung about it. There's a place for human ingenuity, or God would, have not, would not have given it to us, right? Nor am I exactly on a back-to-nature kick, though that may be something I need to consider, to be honest. My primary concern here, though, is for the disconnect, the ways in which we pit progress against nature in a false dichotomy that does not recognize sufficiently that all we have and all we are is gift from God. That is, God has given us life with certain wonderful abilities. Among these is a sort of intelligence that allows us to reason, to figure some things out, to build, even to create, all in the image, though, of the like, all in the image and likeness of God. God has also placed us in the midst of an amazing aggregation of resources. In the beginning, we called it the garden. And God asks us to appreciate it all, to see its value, to delight in its goodness and its diversity, and to care for it as intricately interwoven, as a intricately interwoven whole of grand design. But too often we approach creation as a Gordian knot. With sword in hand, we hack through it at our own peril. Touch the earth lightly, urges Shirley Arena Murray. Use the earth gently. Nourish the life of the world in our care. My friend Mark Liebenau is a wonderful writer. A good deal of his work has been nature writing in the tradition of Henry David Thoreau or John Muir, Wendell Berry, or Mary Oliver. 
He's written a lovely book, Mountains of Light, Seasons of Reflection in Yosemite. He journals on his own experiences in that wilderness place. When he lived in California, Mark would spend a week at a time, almost always off-season, alone in Yosemite. October or January would yield beauty and mystery that the casual camper seldom experiences or sees amid the crush of summer visitors. Of course, it also helps that Mark is dedicated to paying attention, as I suppose most good writers are. After being awakened in the middle of the night by a bear rummaging through his campsite, he wrote this reflection. At 6.30 a.m., tired from conjuring danger from every stray noise and stiff from sleeping on the ground, I pull on clothes that froze overnight and step gingerly into the darkness, cautious of wild animals still prowling around. Lydic Meadow and the Merced River, whose waters sing nearby, are barely visible in the pre-dawn light of the young moon. Night hides the canyon walls under a cloak of blackness, while overhead thousands of sparkling, spinning stars scattered like seeds across the infinity of the universe dance in the dark silence that surrounds the earth. Into this wonder arises the crisp beauty of dawn, a narrow orange band of light that pierces the eastern horizon, the mountain's scent, condenses on my upturned face as I breathe in the valley and its peacefulness, then slowly exhale. My breath rises straight up into the still air. As daylight floods over the mountains, the grandeur of Yosemite emerges and surrounds me with rivers, waterfalls, forests, and sky. The fresh pine air quickens my pulse. I do not know where I am going now that I am here, but I know this is the beginning of something that has been waiting. Surely the world is charged with the grandeur of God. And God is praised from the depths of the valley floor to the heights of the sparkling heavens. Let the whole creation cry, Alleluia. Well, as much as I love reading what Mark writes, and I really do love it, I find it difficult to imagine myself spending a week alone camping in Yosemite at any time of year. To be honest, my idea of visiting nature involves camping out in a hotel. I confess that something is most likely lost in this perspective. I really do believe that, that something is lost in my cultivated perspective. Maybe this is what Hop Hopkins is critiquing when he, ruse, when he ruse that the foot cannot feel being shot. I'm reading a book by Diana Butler Bass, the wonderful writer on religion, called Grounded. And I'm not very far into it, but the whole first part of it is about how we as a people have come to be separated from the dirt. That, uh, that God is our grounding. And she has really beautiful imagery of what it's like, what, what it's like for her as a city girl to learn to love the dirt again. Uh, in her older age, so I uh, really take him with that. Uh, what do we miss? What's lost when we distance ourselves from God's good earth, enshrining ourselves in protective palaces that divorce us from the goodness of the created order? Another friend of mine, Greg Griffey, who is a, uh, grew up in Appalachia and West Virginia, 
and then moved to California, to Northern California. Greg uh, once posted on Facebook a meme, uh, a picture. I said, I've seen a number of pictures like a fairly po popular picture that just shows two legs. In this case, it's two legs, pants rolled up, feet bare, standing in the grass, seeming to revel in contact with God's good earth. He writes of his own journey to feel at home in a new place four months out, and I'm only beginning to feel the ground beneath my feet in this place of bay, mountains, ocean, fog, city, and traffic. He says, I don't know when I began the journey from getting here to being here, but my resistance to this beginning did not stop it from quickly forming, just waiting until I was ready to live more fully into it. That waiting to be present on God's good earth, a place on God's good earth for each of us. Praise God with ten fine toes that wiggle in the grass. Let the whole creation cry, Alleluia! Praise to God! This ought to be the beginning and ending of all of life, ours included. If we start with praise and end with praise, how might our lives be different? How might we define or redefine our concept of dominion? How might we organize or reorganize our relationship to all of creation? How would we approach God's good earth differently? It's often difficult for us to see beyond a sense of our own self-importance. It's about me, it's for me and me alone. Perhaps this is a curse of being sentient beings. Our self-awareness often blinds us to any thought that it is not all about me. Maybe that's why I don't want to hang out alone in a tent in Yosemite, ironically. I've done it with, uh, with, uh, with my partner. I've done it with other folks, so I, I know I like it. My comfort and security are more important to me now than anything I might learn by coming closer to God's good earth. Kind of sad, isn't it? I'd rather keep my boots on than feel the first dewfall on the first grass sprung in completeness where God's feet pass. There's an expression that we are Easter people living in a Good Friday world. We do experience anxiety and insecurity. We feel the need to short circuit any threat to our existence through hoarding resources, accumulating goods for our own personal well-being, building fortresses and stockpiling weapons of mass destruction. But it's pretty difficult to praise God from a bunker, from that position. In Psalm 121, we're reminded that all the help we need comes from the Holy One, who made heaven and earth. Ultimately, it's God in whom we live and move and have our being. What more can we need? Jesus sits in the grass on a hillside in Galilee, grounded in God's earth, literally sitting on the hillside, and he proclaims, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He says, do not worry about your life. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Look at the birds of the air, he exalts. Consider the lilies of the field. If God cares for them, will God not also care for human creatures made in her image and likeness? You of little faith, he bemoans. Ouch, Jesus, we didn't want to hear that. We're trying, Jesus. We want to be faithful. 
Sometimes it's so hard for us to trust, let alone to take responsibility for right living. We may live our lives somewhere between the glory of creation and the paving of paradise, but even in the deepest darkness of our fears, Hopkins does hold hope for us. Our heavy human boots searing and blearing, smearing and smudging. He concludes his poem, and for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. And though the last light, light though the last lights off the black west went, oh morning at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and ah bright wings. What if we focused our gaze on morning breaking, on the bright wings of the spirit hovering above, on the God who broods over us like a mother hen? What if we were to find our treasure in praising the, this God whose very essence is compassion and care? How would it affect our hearts, shape them, move them? How might our lives be transformed? If we were to stop and look around, where might we find creation praising God? You know, creation was praising God long before human beings ever came on the scene. What might we learn from that reality? In Hopkins' view, the key to a renewed heart, one free of fear and insecurity, one made to sing God's praise can still be found. Well, think on these things. Pray about them. Let them become perhaps the ground, God's good earth, from which you live your life. Praise be to the blessed one, the very breath of our breath, the very heart of our heart. Amen. We enter now into a time of communion. If you didn't pick up one of the little packets in the back, there are some on the table in the back. It's a kind of ironic that uh, in this COVID time, uh, we're, we're reduced to... Uh, these little plastic things which is hardly consonant with God's good earth and loving the dirt. But it, but it will do for today. Loving creator, your word is the impulse for all things to be, for space, stars, and stardust to appear, for earth to emerge from the deep, for life to be born of earth and for humans to be born of earth and the spirit. You choose to be born a human being, to become a part of earth, to suffer, die, and rise from death to redeem humankind, renew creation, and affirm all born of earth and of the spirit. Your presence is the living impulse in all things, the Christ deep among us, filling the earth, land, sea, and air, filling every element and place, filling the grain and the grape we share with you this day. Therefore, with angels and archangels, ancient voices in the forest, high voices from the sky, deep voices from the sea, and the whole company of creation, we celebrate your presence among us. Friends, this is Christ's table where all are welcome. Come now, let us share the feast. We read that Jesus, the Christ, on the night of betrayal, took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
This is the bread of life for you and me and all the world. Take and eat. In the same way, after supper, Christ took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. For every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until Christ comes. This, friends, is the cup of salvation for you and me and all the world. Take and drink. Let us pray. Bless this, the bread of life. Bless this, the cup of salvation. Bless this, your welcome table. Bless us, your people, O God. Let this sacred meal nourish us, body and soul, so that we might live our lives in holy communion with you and in blessed community with all of creation. Amen. That's our...
Lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loans are bound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loans are bound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loans are bound. Amen. Go out to share the good news. Now we go out. 